Hello, welcome back to the Football Terrace. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Manchester United need a new striker. Romelu Lukaku is doing everything in his power to leave the football club. It will leave Manchester United short in that area. And according to reports in Spain, Manchester United have agreed a deal with Sevilla to bring Ben Yedda to Manchester United next season as a replacement for Lukaku if, if a deal can be struck between Manchester United and Inter Milan. This deal will happen. This deal, will be, this, this deal that's been agreed this, will be triggered if Lukaku moves on. Which makes complete and utter sense. Like, whether you want to believe the story or not is up to you. But from a logical point, from a logical standpoint, makes sense. If you sign Ben Yedda and then you don't sell Lukaku, you're oversubscribed in that area. Interestingly, over the last three or four days, more and more Man United fans I speak to, more and more people that I uh, talk to, and more things I read, a lot of people are starting to like the idea of Ben Yedda. A fairly cheap option in the current market. A player that, has, I think for seven seasons running, has scored and assisted over, over, over 20, 20 to 25 goals each year, and that's got progressively better. 30 goals scored in all competitions last season. A player that can finish, can hold the ball up. He, he's a good football player. His technique is there. And with the development that I, I think will be done over the next 18 months with Greenwood, Rashford, and of course, Anthony Martial, I think signing the 28-year-old, uh, I just think, I think it's very, very sensible. You bring in somebody who's a bit older, a bit more experienced, more established, relatively cheaply for the, for, for the current climate that we find ourselves in, I think it's great. I think it's a really, um, a, a really good bit of banter. Um, a bit of banter, so I read a comment there. I think it's a really good bit, bit of business. Someone said there, the Anfield agenda, don't like banter. I didn't banter the, the guy from Anfield agenda. I just simply said, like, don't banter Man United fans with a story that the Sun created. That kind of feels a little bit hypocritical to me, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not here to talk about that nonsense. I know a lot of people are asking about the Rants fight. Um, I'll chat about it a little bit later on in the stream. But do me a massive favour before we jump more into this story. Ben Yedda to Manchester United. Reports coming from Spain that the deal has been agreed. It's simply waiting for Lukaku to sign on the dotted line with Inter Milan. Most people in, in, in the industry think that deal will go through. You are talking about £75 million now. The, the transfer fee for Lukaku, which would, which would be amazing business, by the way, for Man United to recoup, recoup every single penny for a player that most would consider to have been a flop. So it, it's, it's, it's an interesting one for me. Ben Yedda, I'm happy with it, but I want your viewpoints and uh, your opinions on that. I will, of course, jump into more of your live comments. How old is Ben Yedda? 28. Baz here says he's prolific. I think he could add... Um, Add something different to our attack. Do you think he can handle the Premier League? Well, he certainly handled Man United two seasons ago in the Champions League. So we've seen him do it against English clubs. The answer is I don't know. I, I think to, I'd like you just don't know in this day and age. Some players come in, they hit the ground running. Others take time to adjust and get ready for it. But I think, again, the, the price you're getting him for in the current market, I think it mitigates that risk slightly. What about Aubameyang? What's going on with him? Well, look, everyone knows my feelings on Aubameyang. We spoke about it with some of the Arsenal boys at the O2 last night. Um, I think Man United are trying. I think they would look at it. Well, I, got, I saw quoted prices today of 56 million, but it's whether or not they can get it over the line. It's whether or not Arsenal uh, agree, to, agree to... The only reason Arsenal would do it is if they needed the money to fund the Zaha deal. But if Zaha isn't going there anyway... It's a difficult one, but uh, yeah, the, the thing, the, the st sticking point for Man United when it comes to signing an attacker and signing a striker is um, it's all dependent on the Lukaku situation. Somebody here says the Obama links are lazy media. A lot of people are saying that these Obama Yang links have stemmed from Ornstein. Uh, is it Ornstein? Is that you pronounce it? Ernstein Ornstein's comments about. The only way Aubameyang is going to be sold or a big player is going to leave is to try and fund the major deal and the media create stories from it. 
great viewpoint, great theory, but the rumors that I've seen all come from Andy Goldstein talking about his friend who works in football that occasionally tells him about big deals that are about to happen. And he told him about the Martial one a few days before and a, and a number of others. But he also said, his connection said, that Man United are hot in the pursuit of Aubameyang. So nothing to do with the comment from Ornstein, Ornstein or whatever his name is. So from my point of view, it's like I, I get that and people are trying to play it down, lazy journalism. But they, they, that theory falls down, or at least it's challenged when you put in the Andy Goldstein situation, what he said live on Talk Sport, and the fact that the reason I trust Andy Goldstein is because he, he doesn't do this every transfer window. He doesn't do this every single week. He doesn't do it all the time where he's like, oh, my friend told me this and my friend told me that. It's simply every now and then he talks about a transfer, which is why I believe him. But there we go. Insanity Dog says, I really don't want us to go big and buy a Bama Yang. <laughs> Lord, Claude, how are you, mate? I'm not begging, but look, listen, I'd love a Bamiyang at my club. He's a top-class player. He truly is. Um, I think the Ben Yedder deal is more likely. Shout out my name. <laughs> no. Shaq Sham, there you go. There's your little shout out. Low center of gravity, grit, gritty type player. Suarez-esque Yedda is a different vibe, is what Khan has said there. Aubameyang won't come. Oli loves Rashi. And Oli does love Rashford, and I think that that will... I'm really excited about Rashford next season. I'm truly, truly excited. I think that that December to March run until his injury was brilliant. Of course, there's been pro it, 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 awful towards the end of the season. No one's going to deny that, along with many, many other players in that Man United squad. I think that, th that three and a half, four month period where we saw an absolutely potent, 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 potent Rashford, I think we'll get that for 70% of the season next year. I think it will be the year he steps up further. And I'm just excited about what he's going to do. I truly am. Uh, I think Martial's got a big, big season ahead of him. It's been so nice for him to have a quiet summer. No talk about him leaving. And what's even better about that is every time he had a falling out with Jose... There was a story within a few weeks him being linked with this club, that club. His agent trying to get him a move somewhere else. It was always an issue. Big kickoff with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the end of the season. We did a big video on it. I think he did about 70-odd thousand views. Ole kicking off with him about him being lazy, not working hard enough, not trying. Not a peep. Not a peep from the player since. Putting in extra hours, extra training, increasing his fitness. For me, what I love about that, it shows, it demonstrates to me that he's listened to Ole. There's respect there. And if he can turn that around with players like Martial that have been described as lazy by other managers in the past, many, many fans, if he can turn that work ethic around and get an extra 10 or 15% out of him, what a player we have on our hands. And that's what it's all about. And one of the biggest areas that I challenge the, gla the Glazers and the board on is they had to reinstill power with the management, power with the coaches, and take it away from the players. Martial's a huge character. He's won battles with managers in the past, along with other players, and it appears this time round, Oli's won. But Oli's won not by yielding his power like a, like a spoilt brat. He's done it, I believe he'll have done it with charm, with charisma, with authority, and, but being authentic at the same time. <laughs> Jack here says, of course, it's yet another silly Man United video. <laughs> Bruv. It's what it is. We do three videos a day. We touch other teams. If you don't like it, bite me. What's your take on reverting Martial to the number nine position? Mate, listen, I think give it a go. I honestly think give it a go. Look, we know how good Martial is. He's one of the most clinical strikers in, 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 the, in, in the Premier League. He just needs to work harder. And I'm not talking here. People go, that doesn't need to track back. I'm not talking about tracking back as such. I'm talking about runs off the ball, making space for others, dropping deep at times, moving into the channels, just sometimes running three or four times off, off, the, sh off, off, off the shoulder of a, of, of a defender. You might not even have the ball played to you, but you're making the centre-backs think. You're pulling people out of positions. That kind of additional work. I think anyone who plays up front for Oli is going to have to do that. Hey, Tezza. Did you have a good night? Listen, I had a really, really great night uh, at the O2 yesterday. I met with one of my best mates, Phil, uh, beforehand, a few drinks, and then went to the O2 and um, 
Yeah, met, met a lot of people that, quite a few YouTubers that I've seen. I met Sonny from AFTV. Uh, he's a legend, he really is. I met like, Lee as well. I've already met Lee before. So I met, I met Sonny. Uh, who else did I bump into? Like, I, had, I haven't met. I saw Louis up there and George and people, but like, I know them. Uh, Robbie like, said hi, and of, of course, like, DT and whatever. I bumped into an old friend of mine as well, uh, Michael Venom Page, which was great. I haven't seen Michael for. I said about 10 years now. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see him. So yeah, it was really good. And, and for me, it was quite a humbling night as well because um, the amount of people, the amount of people that, were, you know, just coming up and being kind, talking about the channel, talking about what we, what we do here. And, and uh, yeah, really, really good. Really, really good. And I think that I'm, yeah, I, I just felt really humbled by it. And, and then I did get really drunk, like real drunk. Uh, I got home, I don't know, about three o'clock in the morning, went to an after party. It was all good. It was all good. There's a comment from somebody here, King, King Ark, who says, you chat so much see, uh, shit. <laughs> Martial is not one of the best strikers in the league. Uh, there is literally no Man United links with Ben Yedda. My God, you're delusional. There are no Man United links to Ben Yedda. <laughs> I've made that up. Bro, your internet's broke. Your internet... <laughs> your internet is broken and again you weren't actually listening I didn't say for a single second that he was one of the best strikers in the league he said one of the best finishers and he is one of the best finishers in the league and when he's on form he's there correct me if I'm wrong I swear that's what I said if I'm wrong I stand corrected and I apologise but I thought I said one of the best finishers yeah Terry what are you like when you're drunk <laughs> mate do you know what I'm a it's weird, right? I just buzz. I have a good time. I like to laugh. I like to joke. I like to play. But when I get, I got to a point last night where I knew I'd, had, I'd drunk too much. Um, and I kind of, I sat, I get quiet then. I'm like, right, yeah, I've got to just relax because I can, I can tell, I can sort of, yeah, I ain't making sense. I'm finished. I'm mashed. So that's it. That's where we go. But that's it. It was good. Martial has the best conversion rate in the Premier League. Yes, he does. And there's another stat I saw yesterday that, 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 that marries up like efficiency with shots taken. Martial's one of the best in Europe for that. Um, and like I said, there's, there's a lot more about him that needs to improve to become one of the best strikers in the league. But yeah, he's doing that. Nice cap. Thank you for the comments on the cap. My mate, my friend's company, Bella and Moore. Rams here. Rams 04. Rams 04, sorry. Says that Martial has the, oh, another one with the best conversion rate on. What are you even on? There are links to Ben Yedda. Maurice, this is, this is the thing as well. I have a lot of, a certain amount of comments that my, that my admin team delete. And I've said to them, look, we want to be a place that's designed to generate and chat and talk about football. Which we, remove, we don't remove criticism and we don't remove feedback. What we do remove, remove are nonsense comments. So if somebody says like, oh, Terry, you, you, you have made this story up. It gets deleted and moved on. We don't need that. Especially when you only have to type in the word Ben Yedda now in Google and you will see umpteen stories. So yeah, it's one of them ones. But look, people, you're always going to get those haters. You're always going to get them trolls. We sometimes interact slightly like we've done now. But what we tend to just do is, is block and move on. There we go. Um, how Carl, Carl, I'm very good, mate. Thank you. Terry, why hasn't PSG announced Herrera yet? Yeah, I don't know. I, got, I, I haven't really paid it much thought, so I, I don't know. Um, interesting. Is he an upgrade on Lukaku? The thing with Ben Yedder is, I would say he is. I think he, I think he is an upgrade. I don't think he's as good a finisher as Lukaku, but I think he's an overall better football player. And what I kind of like is he's almost, he's not a superstar Ben Yedder. Everybody's heard of him. If we sign him, there will be a bit like the signing of Dan James in a way that there'll be an element of, you know, long staff we're, we're being linked with as well. They'll be mocking. They'll be mocking of that. People will be, oh, you know, you can't attract the best. You can't attract this. You can't attract that. I love a signing like this because I feel there's less pressure on them and us. The expectations aren't quite as high and, and maybe that will help them flourish. There have been so many big, big signings in the last six years that suddenly it's like, okay, well, you've, you've gone and signed Di Maria and Falcao. You've got to deliver. You have to deliver. You have to be challenging for league titles. They have to be banging in this amount of goals, creating all these assists, playing a certain way. And I think the, these kind of signings, good quality players, it feels more like these are who Oli wants. And if they are who Oli wants... No excuses over a few-year period if he fails. 
But I just feel if we create that right environment, the right ethics, the right morality around the football club, there will be there will be an improvement, there'll be growth, and there could again be success. Um, Abba here says Pickford, Kulabali, Maguire, Shaw, AWB, McTominay, Fernandez, Chong, Daniel James, Rashford, and Martial. Okay, well, you said like starting lineup for the first game of the season. I don't know about that. You're playing Chong in midfield there, bruv. Tell me your formation with that. That's a good point, Terry. Plus, his wages wouldn't be out of control versus an Akadi level player. It's true. And, and you know what? If you bring. I just think Ben Yella, for, for, for. Like I said about Abamyang, Abamyang would be a great option. What I like about Ben Yedda is for four years, you get this player there who's established. He's deve- he, he can be buzzing to play for Man United. He's going to work hard, I think. He's going to train hard. He's going to be professional. And it gives. You know, by the time those four years are up, we are going to have a 28 year old. Marcia, we're going to have a 26 year old, 20, 25, 26 year old Rashford. We're going to have a, like a 22, 23 year old Greenwood who are then ready. They're ready at that place. We've got to remember how young these boys still are. Um, yeah, it, it'd be great. It would be great. I think it would anyway. There we go. Hayden Johnson. Who, what did Hayden Johnson say? I'm going to go and find the comment because everyone says epic. So I want to find it now. Where's your comment, my bro? Can't find it. Okay. Koulibaly, centre-back. Partey, Fernandez, Pepe, right ring. What do you think? Yeah, Hayden, I agree. All, all, if, if United signed all four of those guys with what we already have now, that would be, be an amazing, amazing transfer window. And I think that you could pull that off. That would be great. Move a, few of the, move a few of the Deadwood players on. be marvellous. Mr. Singh, thank you very much for the super chat. How many signings do you see? I, look, I think that United will sign four to five players still this summer. I really do think they'll get four or five. You know, number three. I think the third will happen this week, you know. I, I, I really feel that this week another signing will come through just as pre-season starting. More players coming back from holidays, international tournaments either ending or becoming a, that, that, that bit thinner, freeing up time of agents and, and intermediaries and whatnot. Yeah, and there's been some deals now. And, and as these deals start to move forward, they, they will create a knock-on effect. To be honest, Ben Yedda is dead wood, is what Michael Duffy says. Oh, that's, that's a crazy opinion. Ben Yedda is like Aguero, but more, but more movement from deep. I, look, I wouldn't quite put Ben Yedda... I wouldn't put Ben Yedda on Aguero's level. I wouldn't do that. I think Aguero is one of the best strikers the Premier League has ever seen. He's absolutely... Do you know, if it wasn't for the injuries that he gets as well, and he always seems to have a couple of months out of season injured, I think he'd probably have scored an extra 100 goals since he's been in the Premier League if he hadn't have missed the amount of time that he's done. And um, By the way, Ben, I'm not saying that he can't finish. I just wouldn't put him on Aguero's level, to be fair. Uh, are Man United going for a Star Wars theme? Ben Yedda... <laughs> <laughs> ben Yedder and one for Zaka. <laughs> That's a nice comment. I like that. Listen, appreciate everybody tuning in. Take care of yourselves. God bless. I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.